This is 7 National News. Here are the headlines. UAE President reshuffles Supreme Petroleum Council. Ruler of Dubai appoints new chairman for Noor Islamic Bank and Emirates NBD. And levy breaches threaten towns along the Missouri River. And in our top story, UAE President His Highness Sheikh Khalifa bin Zayed al Nahyan has restructured the Supreme Petroleum Council by issuing two Emery decrees and has appointed a new Director General for the Abu Dhabi National Oil Company. According to a local paper, the first decree states that the SCP, SPC will be chaired by President His Highness Sheikh Khalifa bin Zayed al Nahyan and other members include Sheikh Sultan bin Zayed al Nahyan and General Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed al Nahyan, Abu Dhabi Crown Prince and Deputy Supreme Commander of the UAE Armed Forces, among others. In the second degree, Sheikh Khalifa has appointed Abdullah Nasser al Suwaidi as Abnox Director General. His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, Vice President, Prime Minister of the UAE and Ruler of Dubai, has issued Law Number 11 of 2011, amending Law Number 14 of 2007, establishing Dubai Real Estate Corporation. As per Article 3 of the law, a public corporation owned by the government will be established, operating its work on a commercial basis under the name of Dubai Real Estate Corporation that will enjoy a legal personality, financial and administrative autonomy and legal capacity to undertake all actions that ensure the achievement of its purposes. Emirates MBD and Nor Islamic Bank both have new chairman of the board. Appointed by the Vice President of the UAE and ruler of Dubai, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum. His Highness Sheikh Ahmed bin Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum has been appointed as the new chairman of the board of the directors of Nor Islamic Bank. He replaces His Highness Sheikh Ahmed bin Saeed Al Maktoum in his position. And Sheikh Ahmed bin Saeed Al Maktoum, chairman of Emirates Airline, has been appointed as the new chairman of the board of the directors of Emirates NBD, the UAE's largest bank by assets. Today, the Sharjah Museum of Islamic Civilization inaugurated the Messenger of Mercy and Humanity and his Virtues in the Prophet City exhibition by renowned Saudi artist Abdullah Al Sani. The exhibit runs for next month and is a part of Sharjah's aim to reaffirm the cultural position of the Emirates as the capital of Islamic culture 2014. June Wrigley has this report. Sheikh Mohammed Saud Al Qasmi, chairman of the government of Sharjah Finance Department, inaugurated the exhibition of renowned Saudi artist Abdullah Al Sana. He was born in 1948 and graduated from the Fine Arts Institute in Baghdad, where he first learned Arabic calligraphy. Abdullah Al Sana worked in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia's Ministry of Planning for over three decades, where before the advent of the printing press, he hand wrote the government's five year plan twice. Through his profession, as well as training with a number of other renowned calligraphers, Abdullah Al Sana has mastered the art of calligraphy, and through this art, he hopes to convey this message. Our Prophet, peace be upon him, centuries ago delivered his message from Al Madinah, which was intended for the whole world. The hadith in the booklets are all words of our Prophet, where he talks about love, forgiveness, peace, mercy. This is Islam. This was our Prophet's message. What I'm trying to do through my art is to deliver or re-deliver the message of our Prophet to artists worldwide. The works of Abdullah al Sana combine verses from the Holy Quran with the beauty of calligraphy and the creative use of Arabic script. What the artist accomplishes is the ability to build bridges between Islamic civilizations and modern art for all viewers to appreciate. But this is no easy task. Rather, some of his pieces require a month of hard work. And this is because his artwork is not just simply about what's on the canvas, but about conveying a much deeper message. This picture of Sheikh Mohammed Saad al Qasimi, I spent one month working on. The message of this piece was that we are Muslims. We are looking after peace. We don't encourage violence. So how does a renowned calligrapher and artist feel about today's generation focused on computers and technology? Computers will not teach us what we can learn from calligraphy and script. 
Though calligraphy, more than simply typing, we have the ability to learn and understand the subtleties and meanings of the Arabic language. Although computers and technology are here to stay, there is no doubt that there is truth to Abdullah al Sana's art, and through his works, calligraphy will continue to hold a very special place in Islamic art. June Wrigley, Seven National News. Al Tamimi Investments officials announced today this year's winner of the big start. According to organizers, the competition saw participants double with 71 shortlisted entries. Launched in 2009, the big start is open to all senior year students and aims to hone and cultivate young entrepreneurial talent in the UAE that will eventually contribute to the economy's growth and stability. The final leg of the student entrepreneur competition reached its peak today. Altamimi Investments honored the top three participants at a ceremony. The event's highlight was the announcement of the Big Start winner that went to 25-year-old German student Stephanie Ost. She won for her idea of opening a modeling school and agency based in the UAE, as well as her personality and drive for success. Winning today is just so priceless to me. I mean, no words can describe it. And um, it's an absolute dream come true. Now in its second year, event officials say they are proud of what the program has achieved so far. Since its launch in 2009, it has inspired many students to explore the idea of becoming their own boss as well as contributing to the UAE's economy. In these times of economic austerity measures, people tend to be looking at reducing as opposed to growing. We'd like to see a turnaround. We need, we'd like to see confidence back in the economy, confidence back into the market and confidence for students that when they do finish their education that there are opportunities out there for them. Um, we strongly believe that this program actually works with students to do that. But the most important thing for us about our program is it's structured in an incredibly demanding fashion. The students actually have to put a lot of time and effort into not just having the idea but convincing us that their idea is practical and applicable. And we think that whether you win or you don't win, um, the students benefit from the fact that they're not just focusing on the theory of an idea, but the actual practical application. And that can transcribe through opening up their own business or even just taking on a challenging role. Meanwhile, the program's inaugural winner, Yahya Stapich, says he has matured since. After all the work he's put in the past year, he is now working towards launching his retail fashion incubator concept, United Designers, during the third quarter of 2011. There's a lot of things to think about and it really takes a lot of sort of planning and, uh, you know, sort of uh, uh, organizing your tasks over a weekly basis. Whatever you do, just try to stay committed and dedicated to what you do and you know associate yourself with the right people and you know try to read a lot to whatever idea you know you want to pursue and you know do your homework do your research etc and I think you know you get there but just keep at it and if you fall you know just get up again and if you fall, if you fall again just get up one more time and that's what it takes to actually you know win the big start. This year's competition attracted students from 30 nationalities in 40 universities across the country. It focuses on creating opportunity for students and the development of their core business skills. The Big Start winner will join Altamimi Investments, wherein they will receive further mentoring and support to realize their dream. Khadija Sali, 7 National News. On Saturday, visitors to the Bergman Centre were encouraged to join the latest health and weight loss initiative, Lose to Gain. The drive to help residents shed off unwanted pounds will in turn benefit Manzil, a centre for special needs in Sharjah. Children from the Manzil Centre for Challenged Individuals performed yesterday to show their skills and encourage the public to join the initiative. In support, health and fitness instructors showcased a variety of exercise to the public to attract more to become fit and healthy. According to them, people often make the mistake of going on a diet without a proper plan or guidance, which then often leads to failure. With Lose to Gain, the residents will be able to embark on a healthy plan for life. Lose to Gain is a program that we have launched uh, for raising funds for Manzil. It will help us by spreading an awareness about Manzil itself. Also spreading an awareness, our message, it will take our message back into society, which is health, well-being, and uh, an inclusive society where people of different abilities do uh, live together. Uh, one of the ways that we wanted to raise funds was that every time a person loses weight, they ask people to support them 
towards this goal and they would all contribute something for every kilo of uh, weight that they might lose. And uh, therefore, the funds that they raise ultimately would be given to the charity, which is Manzil. And looking to news abroad now, flooding along the Missouri River continued to take its toll on levees in northwest Missouri on Saturday. Levees built to hold back high water in Atchison and Holt counties have failed, inundating farmlands and homes, leaving only rooftops and treetops visible from miles above. Both counties have reported voluntary evacuations as well as the closing of numerous roads, highways and Big Lake State Park. And the ash plume from Chile's volcano continued to wreak havoc on flights in New Zealand on Sunday, as some airlines, including Qantas, Jetstar and Virgin Australia, cancelled flights to and from the country. However, other airlines continue to fly, including Air New Zealand, which said it could fly its planes at a lower altitude around and beneath the ash cloud. Most airlines are expecting it to resume flights to Auckland on Monday, though some flights to Wellington may still be disrupted. And up next, we've got the day's business news, so stay with us.